Hi, this is Dr. Bharadwaj. I am CEO and Chief Doctor at Vedika Swamyapati. Today we will discuss on the topic of perianal sinus and fistula. So this is one of the most common diseases we see around the anal region. The problem with this disease is most of the times this will be a long-standing one. The reason for this is it doesn't cause any pain or it doesn't cause any major discomfort and it is not seen outside. So that's the reason people tend to ignore it and keep it for a long time where it becomes a chronic one and it becomes more dangerous. Normally, we have seen the cases where people keep it for 10 to 20 years without getting treated and finally come up with a serious complication. So that is one of the challenges we face during the treatment. Next one is there are other diseases around your anal region like hemorrhoids or piles or fissures or pylonidal sinus and also in females Bartholin cysts, perianal abscess. These are the common ones along with this uh, disease you see and people tend to confuse this disease with other diseases and start taking treatment for other this. This happens when you go to a quake doctor or false doctor and he diagnoses it wrongly and gives you wrong treatment or you go on to Google or you go on to YouTube and search for your symptoms and you will get some other video. Based on that you will treat on your own and you land into more issues. So whenever you find any problem around your anal region immediately you have to contact a specialist and diagnose it properly and get that treated. What exactly is this perianal sinus or perianal fistula? So basically Sinus is a blind tract within your body where it opens on the surface. In this what happens is inside of your anal canal there will be a small tube and this tube this blindly ends in the surrounding tissues and there will be some discharge like pus and blood from this tube into the anal canal. Next one is fistula. Fistula is an abnormal communication between your anal canal internal part of your anal canal and your buttock. So there is abnormal tube from this tube you can see instead of motion coming out of your anus and also you can see some pus and blood also in this. So basically uh, sinus and fistula are same. Uh, sinus uh, will have a blind tract it blindly ends in a, a tissue of your body and fistula connects two surfaces that is your anal canal and external part of your buttock. And the important one is 50% of the anorectal abscess will lead into the complication of anal fistula or anal sinus. You, you have to be very careful while treating anorectal abscess as well. Coming to the signs and symptoms, the important one is the patient will see the history of anorectal abscess. That is the major one. And coming to the symptoms, there will be a hole on buttock. From this hole, there will be Sometimes blood coming out, sometimes pus coming out, sometimes even the motion that has to come from your anal region will be coming out of your buttock. There is a small hole from that hole motion will be coming out and also there will be pus and blood discharge even from your anal region when you have anal sinus. There will not be any pain in this disease unless it is highly complicated and it is in advanced stage. Coming to the investigations or the test you have to do when you suspect there is a problem with your anal region. First one is proctoscopy. Proctoscopy, we will insert a small camera into anal region and we will check what exactly happening there. Based on that, we can differential diagnose whether it is hemorrhoids or fissures or uh, abscess or any other disease around your anal region. The next one you have to do is endoanal scan. This is an ultrasound scan. Basically, what this does is uh, a probe will be inserted into your anal region and your ultra ultrasound images are taken where you can see where is the abscess and you can see also the tracts of fistula and sinus as well where the sinus is going what is the length and breadth of this abscess or what is the length of this sinus and also what is the direction of this fistula everything you can see with the help of ultrasonogram and also MRI is also recommended. Mainly we will do MRI to know whether any other important structures around your anal region are destroyed. Especially your, especially your internal anal splinter and external anal splinter and any other parts around your anal region are damaged. We will come to know with MRI scan. Apart from these tests, you have to also do other investigations to know why this abscess has come. Is there any compromise in your immunity or any other diseases like do you have HIV or do you have any Crohn's disease, tuberculosis or any major systemic disease, perianal sinus and perianal fistula, you have to, to understand this disease properly, you have to have some idea about anatomy of your anal region. Basically, anal region or anal canal is divided into three parts. First one is upper part, 
middle part and lower part per part is around 15 millimeters in length and it contains transverse hole called anal valve in between this anal column and anal wall there is a slight depression that we call as uh, anal sinus in that sinus there will be anal glands which will be opening into that sinus through ducts anal glands are very important here they will provide lubrication while passing the stool and they help to reduce the friction between the stool and your anal mucosa and this is a very important structure here coming to middle part it is almost uh, 15 millimeters in length and also coming to the lower part of your anal region that is 8 millimeters in length around your anal canal there are two muscles two major muscles which are circular muscles internal anal splinter and external anal splinter internal anal splinter and external anal splinter these are muscular structures which will open while passing the stool and which will close once you pass the stool and helps in continence of the stool so your stool will not involuntary come out of this anal canal that function is handled by both internal anal splinter and external anal splinter coming to the etiology what are the major reasons for uh, anal fistula and anal sinus the complicated anorectal abscess when you have the anorectal abscess and this is not treated properly it may lead into anal sinus and anal fistula from the anorectal abscess the, the tubes are formed if the tube is formed only from uh, abscess to anal canal then it is called sinus if it is connecting both anal canal and uh, external body uh, on your uh, buttock it is called anal fistula there are some identified risk factors for a perianal sinus and uh, fistula first one is tuberculosis uh, if you have tuberculosis you have high chance that you may lead into this disease Crohn's disease this is one of the autoimmune disorder it may also leads to, to perianal sinus and fistula HIV or AIDS if you are in this state so it will also cause this disease IBS inflammatory bowel syndrome or ulcerative colitis even sometimes cancer of the rectum will manifest itself as perianal sinus and perianal fistula coming to the pathology what exactly happens in the body of a person who is suffering from perianal sinus and fistula sinus is a blind tract it will have a tube like structure where the opening is in your anal canal and it blindly ends in the, the surrounding tissue around your anal region and it will discharge pus and blood coming to the fistula it is abnormal communication between your buttock skin and your anal canal where uh, there is a tube it is a long tube or it is a tunnel where uh, it produces some pus it produces some blood uh, bloody discharge and also instead of your stool coming directly from your anal region you can see parts of the stool coming out of this small tubular structure onto your buttock so this is the difference between sinus and fistula you, you can classify the fistulas into two categories where there are opening in the anal canal if they are opening lower part of the anal canal we call it as low level fistulas if they are opening on the higher part of the anal canal we call as high level fistulas and next classification is simple fistula and complex fistula in simple fistula what happens is there will be a single tube from that tube the one opening is in your anal canal and next opening is on your but in a complex fistula what happens is if you don't treat your initial fistula for a long time it leads into complex fistula the complex fistula will have multiple openings on your buttock and multiple openings within your anal canal so there, there will be one abscess from that abscess there will be multiple openings with into your anal canal and multiple openings into your buttock as well the problem with this is this may damage the other parts around your anal region the main part that is going to be damaged is anal splinter which gives a grip to your anal region which helps in continence of the motion so that motion will not come out when you, you are not passing the motion this will be destroyed based on the location of the fistula and direction of the fistula around your anal region this can be classified into different varieties first one is submucosal fistula in this the blind tract or fistula is passing between your anal mucosa and internal anal splinter so this is submucosal fistula if the fistula or the blind fistula tract is passing between external anal splinter and internal anal splinter this we call as or the fistula is cutting through uh, external anal splinter and internal anal splinter and communicating to your buttock this is called transsplinteric fistula when the fistula is traveling above your internal anal splinter and external anal splinter and it is close to your external and internal anal splinter that is known as supra-splinteric fistula there is one more fistula that is extra splinteric fistula this fistula will travel way above the internal and external anal splinter and it communicates to the external to the buttock these are the varieties of fistula you can see based on the direction of fistula and location of fistula around your anal region coming to the conventional treatment conventional treatment is a treatment which you take when you suspect there is some 
problem around your anal region and you go to a doctor who is nearby your home or you go to a corporate hospital or you go to a clinic nearby your home and also you go and meet a gastroenterologist or any surgeon who is commonly available this is also known as english medicine or western form of medicine or allopathic way of treatment so in this there is no medicine for fistula or sinus the only option you have is surgery surgery is very complicated even after doing the surgery you will have a lot of side effects and there is no guarantee that it is going to not occur again so this is a chronic disease there is no proper conventional treatment for perianal sinus or fistula and coming to homeopathy how homeopathy can help you in this regard homeopathy has very good medicines for perianal fistula or sinus so here what happens is you already have a fistula you can cure the existing fistula without any side effects without surgery through homeopathic treatment based on the symptoms when you give the treatment it is completely treated and also not only treating the existing fistula and also we can prevent the fistula from occurring and again and again as this is a chronic disease there is high chance that the fistula will occur again and again and it may lead to other complications and also we can prevent the complications so if you just have a sinus we can treat it or if you, if it is just a simple fistula we can treat it we can prevent it going to complex fistula where there are multiple openings on your buttock and multiple openings within your anal canal the progress of the disease can be stopped the disease is completely cured all this is without any side effects in homeopathy there are no side effects without side effects you can get it treated very well homeopathy is very affordable compared to any other treatment you take ayurveda or any other treatment homeopathy is affordable in ayurveda there is a, a treatment that they call as shara sutra and it is a long process and it is also a, a semi surgical process then compared to shara sutra where uh, you, you they will tie a thread within your anal region and leave it like that for a long time and there will be weird sensation without tying this shara sutra or uh, instead of following this crude practices if you take homeopathy without any discomfort you can cure it permanently without side effects and with very less cost so if you suspect any problem with your anal region and if someone has diagnosed it as a anal fistula or anal sinus you can re immediately reach out to a homeopathic doctor and homeopathy is the best solution for perianal sinus and fistula coming to the precautions what precautions you have to take when you suspect you have this disease the first one is you have to keep your anal region very clean and avoid constipation also reach to a, a doctor who is specialized in this so that it can be treated as early as possible and you will not lead into complications apart from this you have to have a healthy diet you have to have good sleep you have to have exercise scheduled and also you have to lead a stress free life so that your immunity is optimized and you will not land into these kind of infectious disease in future and coming to the prognosis what happens if you don't treat so first one is sinus if it is in the sinus stage where there is only one opening so if you don't treat it it may lead into fistula fistula is again two openings one opening within the anal canal and next opening is on your buttock if you still don't treat it what happens is simple fistula becomes multiple fistulas or a complex fistula where there will be multiple openings on your buttocks and also multiple openings within your anal region where the motion is coming out where the pus is coming out sometimes blood is coming out if you still neglect it they will damage the structures around your anal region mainly those sphincters external anal sphincter and internal anal sphincter these are the muscles which hold your uh, anal region tight when you are not defecating and help you not to uh, pass the motion involuntarily this will be damaged and also in very rare cases what happens is it will turn into malignancy or it will turn into cancer as well so when you suspect any problem around your anal region you can directly contact us we are fidicus homeopathy we have offer you two types of treatment one is uh, online treatment and second one is in person treatment on online treatment wherever you are in the world especially you are in a, a telugu speaking states or within india we can send the medicines to your doorsteps you can use it and get it cured or, and also you can directly come to our clinic we are located in manikonda hyderabad and you can take the treatment thank you